Hi, how's it? Uh, we're in the next part. Please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings. I'm busy explaining to people right now why um, they should reprioritize or reorganize their viewpoint on what's going on here. I'm not antagonistic to the prospect of trying to make your government right or to vote differently to improve the way that things are going for your government. I'm just trying to say right now that things are so bad from what the Lord has shown me that those who are still trying to influence policy decisions in their countries to maintain a godly stead are going to only succeed for all of five seconds before they get overwhelmed again. They're going to stick to their incredible, insane guns. And eventually, over time, if God did not restrict the darkness of the earth um, and bring it to a blistering end through the tribulation, we would get taken over by all of these satanic ideologies, whether or not we like it. That's what I'm getting at. And so God is ending this affair. But before ending it, he is going to endure Christians in some of the least persecuting countries in the world a harsher season. Um, long story short, countries like South Africa, I'm already experiencing the, 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 the brunt of that. Like countries like America, Australia, look, it's already happening, guys. You know, Canada, Jamaica, um, uh, some nations in South America, uh, much of Europe, like nations where it, you know, people generally have got a lot of leg room in terms of their freedoms, including religious liberties. They've been, uh, and the countries also have professed Christianity as a nation. They call themselves a Christian country. Um, Christians in such countries as these are going to start experiencing the kinds of persecutions that you would find in very restrictive countries of relig religious liberties, like in North Korea and China. And as unfathomable as that might be, for instance, to someone sitting in the US, um, one must understand that it is inevitably coming because look, for instance, at what, what level of contempt Elon Musk is being interviewed with by news reporters for insisting upon freedom of speech on Twitter. They are coming at him with guns blazing, giving him an attitude. And he's having to say, I don't care. Like he's, he's becoming increasingly aggressive in his responses to interviews because of the fact that he refuses to smother Twitter users with, um, what do you call this? With, with censorship. Tucker Carlson was recently fired for strange reasons that we still to this day cannot really put together from Fox. And Fox is still tanking for that, right? And he went over to Twitter. He's now working with Elon Musk. Good for him. But the, where it is that we can run, where it is that we can run, guys, is becoming less and less. It's narrowing down. The places that we can escape to, to find a portal to communicate our viewpoints is shrinking. Right now, the only mainstream social media platform that appears to be proliferating human rights in terms of speech has been reduced from just five or six years ago, what, like, it was Facebook, it was YouTube, it was Twitter. TikTok has always been kind of strange, so I don't think they count. It's Instagram. Let's say these are the mainstream places. Pinterest. Let's let's keep the mainstream biggies, okay? Forget about the other smaller ones. These four. It went from four to, to one. It went from four to one. Like mainstream, as in big libraries, big, big communications channels for us to get our messages across. In just under five years. Five years. And censorship has gone so extreme that there's only one mainstream big place, big library, big portal to share our opinions. And even then, Twitter is not well known or well regarded for video streaming. It's more an environment for opinions that are brief, short, succinct, type them in. And then you can share your YouTube video on there if it is not um, smothered. I guess uh, I bet now they're probably going to do that. But Twitter will never ever become a YouTube, if you know what I mean. But Twitter will, will never get to a point where it's also a video streaming, like its main thing. Rumble is nowhere near the size of YouTube. Nowhere near. And uh, like there is such a an issue with uploading on Rumble because of the fact that it's not big enough. And there are a lot of people flooding on there that sometimes after you've uploaded a couple of videos on Rumble, you start to get slow internet speeds or you start to get a, a slow progression of your upload because it can't handle. So it's not big enough. And no matter how much you might tell people, go to Rumble, go to Rumble, you just will not get to those numbers on Rumble. There are only a few, a very small number of people who are big on Rumble. So while I have mad respect for Rumble, it's nowhere near the size in order for you to reach who you need to reach of, for instance, a YouTube, a Twitter, an Instagram, um, uh, what do you call this, a TikTok, uh, you get my point, a Facebook. So yes, of course, there are voices that are coming up against darkness and censorship, censorship of which is silencing or smothering religiously extreme views or let me not say extreme. I mean, Christianity was never considered extreme until off late, but 
um, dogmatic, I guess you can call it that. It's a dogma. Religion is a total dogma. Religious dogmas are to be ironed out, flattened out, scraped out of these mainstream places because that, those are the ones that are coming up against all these incredibly insane agendas that are trying to uh, punch a hole into the hearts of everybody on the earth. So if at all, censorship is smothering religious dogma. Censorship is therefore smothering religion. And that's God right there. And if at all, you're going to smother God out of society and leave him free to reign in one social media portal called Twitter and one social media nonsense portal called BitChute or Rumble, where you barely ever get any audience, you are, you know, making a very small little squeaky voice out of the gospel, which is something that God will frankly not take any stride. If anything, it has been prophesied in his word that the gospel will be preached to all the lands of the earth and then the end will come. So prophecy, it's not a fulfillment of prophecy for censorship to succeed to smother prophecy. It is rather a fulfillment of prophecy for prophecy to burgeon for the word of God to burgeon to all the nations of the world and then only the end will come. So what is the thing that is going to stop YouTube and Facebook and TikTok and um, Instagram from continuing to deplatform, suspend, humiliate, cancel people's accounts? It must be God. When things get to a point where the gospel can no longer be preached, we are getting out of prophecy here. We are leaving the canon of scripture. It has not been prophesied that we will ever be silenced. It has rather been prophesied that we are going to get heard. And so when you funnel down the number of channels through which we can proliferate the gospel, you are bringing yourself to a blistering end. You're bringing the era to a place where now it is necessary to continue to proliferate the gospel through supernatural means, like through an angel that flies overhead telling you not to take the mark of the beast, like through the two witnesses, dead men who come back to live, because they didn't really die, Elijah, Enoch, you get my point, um, where you, like people who are not quite yet understood, Grand Shop, what kind of makeup material they're made up of, but they've never sinned, they are pure, they've never touched women, and they come from the 12 tribes, the 144,000. When human beings can no longer easily preach, stand on podiums, stand at the grocery store outside and evangelize. When they can no longer upload a video on YouTube that they can successfully trust is uploaded and it's going to stay on there without being censored or smothered, then we need the 144,000. We need the two witnesses. We need the angels overhead. We need the signs of the end to evangelize to people that this is the tribulation and you are in it. So if you narrow down where it is that people can hear the gospel, you bring the tribulation on board. You, you bring it on board. You bring it on board. And the moment the majority of the world embraces all of this cancel culture because they've allowed themselves to be seeker sensitive and, and, and pudgy, namby pamby in how they preach the gospel. You are also bringing about another end times fulfilled prophecy called the great apostasy where men will not endure sound doctrine. And so they're going to gather for themselves a great number of teachers to teach them what their itching ears want to hear. CNN is besotted with Joel Osteen, but my goodness, how they can't stand Vody Buckham and John MacArthur. You know what I'm saying? And the hatred of those who preach the sound truth of the Lord's word. It's going to continue to intensify and intensify until it is no longer within feasible bounds to fulfill Bible prophecy for it to be proliferated. We are absolutely going to be able to successfully preach the gospel until we can't. And can't is not the tantamount of smothering by YouTube. That's not in prophecy. Smothering by, so therefore, if YouTube is smothering, then YouTube got to get out of the way. And the only way that YouTube is going to get out of the way is through YouTube being judged for trying to block the word of God. And the only time that that happens is the tribulation. If the Lord extended this season for longer than is absolutely necessary to fulfill Bible prophecy, uh, Elon Musk would get targeted. And in being targeted, they would try and perhaps drain him financially, do stuff to bring him super low until he ultimately capitulates to censoring Twitter. And then we don't have Twitter anymore. Tucker Carlson won't have somewhere to bounce back to after they fire him unnecessarily from Fox News. And then we're going to get places like Rumble being the only option for us. And we all know as a, as a, as a content creator, if you have ever been given grief by mainstream media and try to do Rumble, you will know how frustrating it is because it's so slow. It is so slow and people there barely subscribe. It is so rough to become big enough to be influential on Rumble or even monetize. So that frustration, that the fact that people are also, you know, human beings are creatures of habit, unfortunately, and being creatures of habit, you automatically just gravitate toward, towards which that you have always used all, of, all along. So you will more than likely click on a YouTube video fast first before you will click on a video on Rumble, before you will go to BitChute. You will first go to YouTube. There aren't enough people on this earth that have enough discipline to boycott YouTube. There simply are not enough. If enough people boycotted YouTube, understand that Rumble would burgeon. It would box them. It's like, it would get huge. It's um, 
or what do you call this business uh, value would, would skyrocket but it's not happening fast enough because people are creatures of habit and youtube has been there all along it's familiar we have used it all the time we know how it operates etc and we tend to also run with how many people are getting views uh, if if a person has got 500,000 views we are more inclined to perceive the quality of that video as high versus one with very low views and currently it is the christians that have got very low numbers of views that have got what i find to be some of the best excellent you know utterings from god prophecy like things that give me chills goosebumps confirmations that i make based on what god is showing me i tend to find them in people who are getting just a few hundred views sometimes even single digit views whereas the guys with the big fat chunky numbers i will sometimes go in there and see what's with the 1.7 million i want to see what this is about and i'll be utterly out of my mind just disappointed the social media platforms are proliferating what they want to proliferate and are creating a perception type of pied piper effect where it is that just based on the numbers of what a person has on their channel, it is perceived that their content is good. I've been lured into clicking on shorts for those reasons because of how many millions of views they have. And then I get inside the short and I'm like, what is so 5 million views about this short? I don't get it. And then when I exercise self-control and decide to click on a person with barely any views, that's when I get edified. So given that they're trying to literally mind control people to choose certain things, why under heaven do you think we still have time here? We don't. The gospel of the, the, the Lord will be preached to all nations and then the end will come. And nobody will be able to block it, thwart it, prevent it. So anybody that's trying is basically asking, begging, like on bended knees and everything, to go into the tribulation so that God can just finish this off once and for all and for us to then go and reign in the millennial reign. In the previous part, I was speaking about how I'm so mournful, sad, that I can't be a mother and a wife and just basically somebody who has got a much better example to make to this earth than what's currently going on with the women of the planet. And how it is that the Lord made it clear to me that my daughter, like plural, frankly, some of them, I have withheld from marriage, sons too, and uh, kids, just like Jeremiah, precisely because if you were to bring a brand spanking new baby into this kind of ecosystem as christian parents you would be frustrated by the level of indoctrination that is making it hard for your child to give their lives over to me it's going to make your lives near and impossible if it is possible it's written in god's word strive to live at peace with everybody not only are you having a hard time living at peace with the world because it refuses to just do what's ordinary normal or even acknowledge genders as just two how much more will your impressionable five-year-old easily just get swayed by the majority opinion that is against their parents that keep on getting undermined by mainstream everything? For instance, in the United Kingdom, there is a woman there whose child was forced to partake in some kind of a alphabet agenda parade or event. And she said no. And they took her to court. She took the issue. They, I think, expelled the child or whatever. She took it to court and the court voted in favor of the school. So now when, as a five-year-old kid, the whole world is against your mom, at some point you start to wonder as that child, you know how impressionable kids are. What's wrong with your mom? For instance, with women that are abused by their husbands, it is statistically known that children of abused mothers tend to underestimate the value and the value and the quality of their mom because of how abused they are because of how much they keep crying because of how much the dad keeps on slapping them all over the show because of how also ostracized and abandoned that woman is by her own ecosystem because people hate misery they hate to intervene in the affairs of someone that is going through too much people just don't want to have too much on their shoulders so an abused victim tends to be ostracized and isolated precisely because they're abused so the isolation of this woman then causes the kids to be like mommy you don't even have enough friends most of the world around you uh, kind of thinks you're weird people avoid you the the women in that apartment keep on gossiping you kids on the school playground keep on teasing me because you keep on dropping me off at school with blue eyes and on top of that dad beats you up like no man's business so these kids if they grow up in this environment they end up underestimating the value the intrinsic value of their mom it's like a whole study so there is nothing worse for a, a, a woman to do than to ride out an abusive husband because all she's doing is causing even the loss of her children's respect you gotta go like you have to leave as soon as possible so you get out of a situation that causes society to underestimate you it's unfortunate like you have to rescue yourself from being abused that you might be rescued from being abused it's, it's ridiculous like that people should just come to the rescue of the struggling and not treat them badly but i would know personally I would know personally how it is, like how, how people can mistreat you purely because you're already mistreated. They, they treat you like you're the scum of the earth. You're avoidable, avoidable entirely. There's nothing of you that is worthwhile to gaze upon. So whenever anybody looks um, 
at you or in your direction, they can't look you in the eye. People can't, like, people can't look me in the eye. People cannot look me in the eye. And they, when they have conversations with me, so they, you know, they, they shuffle around in their bodies. Like, they have, they've got so much pity. And they try to talk to me for only, like, five seconds and move on. They don't want to probe or ask too many questions because they know I don't have good answers to give about my status quo. That is the life of an abuse victim. So the only way to escape victimization or victim mentality or just that pity party that everybody slaps you with is for you to rescue yourself out of it that people might finally respect you and finally be comfortable around you. You gotta heal from your blue eye before somebody wants to comfort you for ever having gotten it in the first place. It's a weird little world that we need to get out of because the Lord has compassion and mercy on the abuse in the state of their abuse while the world is hugely avoidant of the abused. So now if you are dealing with parents raising a child in an environment that hates their ideology and that kid constantly sees the massacring of the character of their parents no matter how much they might try and instill sound biblical doctrine into this child just by mere virtue of observing their parents getting tortured by the society courts ruling against the favor of the parents children persecuting this kid for their parents holding to a christian viewpoint a biblical viewpoint of the world that child of yours will then be indoctrinated away from sticking to the guns of their parents they will join the mob because peer pressure is a big thing with children they will join the mob maybe they might wake up when they're 27 but by then the damage has been done because from the age of 7 to 27 this kid has been made to believe their parents are worthless in society if they reach their own conviction great but sometimes they just never do peer pressure mob pressure just yeah mob mafia pressure is is a real big challenge for the body of christ in 2023 parents even if you homeschool it, it like it's going to get harder and harder for you to maintain your child in sobriety because they are growing up in a bombardment of just a toxic culture that is proliferating dirty agendas into children's throats so the lord has made it kind of overt to me anyway that i did not allow you to get kids and i did not want for you to get married because culture was going to make your whole ecosystem twitch and glitch and that which is good which would which would have been within the walls of your household would have been called evil and that which is evil would have been called good and your children would have been more easily and more readily indoctrinated no matter how much you try to reinstall different values in them i'm young enough to have kids that would be under the age of like six seven do you understand and it is these children that are facing a future of severe indoctrination perhaps maybe kids that are currently teenagers are alert and awake enough to be like whoa this is rubbish maybe the gen z's got a shot but the generation alpha the the new babies that are being born now the seven year olds the six the five year olds the zero year olds they're the ones that are going to be born into such a bombardment of fervent rubbish that their parents would have a little little um leg room to basically chart the course of the destinies of their kids by instilling certain values because they're going to get snatched away from them as quickly as they get rooted in these kids as quickly as so for the sake of, I guess, the elect of God and for the sake of the children, the Lord cast the days short. That is why God did not let me have kids. The likelihood of them getting saved would have been smothered by this society, first of all, making the, the choice for God for themselves. It would have been smothered. And in and of myself, I would have been beleaguered on all sides by so much naysayers and hate and so much attack at my marriage that it would have been hard to be happy in my marriage. Have you ever been a bride, a bride at, uh, on your wedding day with your girls being so jealous that they can't even take photos on your wedding day with you where they're actually smiling in a way that's believable? They absolutely ruin the entire day. The photo ops are destroyed because of their jealousy. Well, in these last days, there's going to be so much hatred of the church such that godly marriages that come together, instead of them emanating glory, there's going to be so much envy from the world outside and so much rebellion and so much resistance that it's not going to be a happy day. I had a friend, she wasn't even getting married in Christ, but she was just getting married. Who got married um, on whose wedding day? She wasn't happy because of how jealous her girls around were. And among those girls was one of my girls that I was there with. And I could feel the, the, the energy, the bad vibes that were inside the bride. When I tried to go to her on some congratulations, she just looked at me on some, she wasn't sure if she could trust me. And I'm like, but I've known you for all these years. You even invited me to a very expensive wedding where you charge, you know, what, what is this? You invite a person per table and it's very expensive per table. You, I was that close for you to invite me to your white wedding. And yet you, you can't trust me on your wedding day to be truly glad for you. She could not figure out the difference between me and my girl on the left and on the right here who were hating on her on her wedding day. Who in the world wants to get married in a climate like that? Who? Where everyone is envious instead of happy for you. Who? There is a reason why the Lord has withheld from me that which appears to be um, an answered prayer. Commit your ways to the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. It's not that the Lord has said no. It's that the Lord has said not yet. Next part.